Let's see who's here. Every live on January 2018 will be posted. Yes, all lives are always posted after. That's not a problem. Um, I don't need to give any answers. Alright, so come side students, right? You all on the inside? All the um lower six comes right? This is lower six comes I I should have changed the title to lower six comes I uh, make sure. Just keep come side. Come side students on the inside. Let me know. Let me know before I start to go on and all the forget. Are the come side students here? To need your responses. So let me see what's going on. Let's start with this question. All right. So this question one was the four bit ones complement of um, representation of six. Alright, good. So, I right, so we start in four bit, four bit one's complement of six. So the ones complement of six would mean that you have to just invert the bits. So we have to do the conversion for what um the conversion for six and six is um zero one one zero because this will be four here and it'll be two here, so that'll give you six. And the ones complement is when you invert it, so you will get one zero zero one. So the answer is C. Right? Ones complement is when you invert the bits. Twos complement is when you invert the bits, then you add one to it. So this is the ones and then the twos now. It. And you will get zero one zero. Yeah. So ones is just input. 
OK Uh, senior said A. Any particular reason why? No particular reason? Okay. Well, do you understand why it's um, one's complement, which is just in Britain? So let's go again. Let's see this one now. Two. All right, decimal equivalent of the ASCII representation of A65. What will be the representation of G? So we have an A, so if A is 65, then we want to get to J, A, B, C, D, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, that's plus 10, so 65 plus 10 will be 75, yep, pretty much, so the answer is C. Right, remember when you add in 10, you have to start from B. So, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, G. Oh, it's 9. My bad. Okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. Plus 9. So, it's 74. So, the answer is 74. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Then. A is correct. A is correct. You are right. You are right. Alright, so let me go on. Uh, let's get a number. Next one. Next one. Three. Alright, our computer designer wishes to store some instructions which need to be quickly retrieved. Which of the following is the best location to place the instructions? So instructions I need to be quickly retrieved. Yeah, quickest place to restore something is from the cache memory. Because any any speed on we are the CPU speed. The next fastest guy is cache. Next fastest guy is RAM. And the next fastest guy or girl is um hard drive. So cache is the fastest there. Alright, so the answer is C. Cool, cool, cool. We're rolling along. Um, let's go with this one now for... User wishes to properly close all open files and log off for a computer. When there's an electricity outage, what device should handle this? This is a, uh, a UPS, because a UPS is the only one that will hold stuff because it have a battery. The battery is what is going to give it the ability to um, properly close all open files. Oh, gosh, I didn't give you all a chance to answer, sorry. Y'all got these here, right? Okay, so I'm going to give y'all a chance now. 
Alright, which of the following devices represent components in a CPU? What number this is? Five? I wait your answers. I have two eels and I have a no, I have a C. All right, someone said C. Which of the following devices represent components of a CPU? The ALU is part of the CPU, the CU, and registers. RAM is not part of the CPU, so answer is one, two, and three. So the answer is C. Nice. Let's keep it going. Keep it going. Next one. The deco part of the fetch execute cycle in a computer involves. So remember in every instruction you have the opcode and then you have the operand. So the um then you have um fetch executes all right so the fetch is going to pull it from ram and then the, the code is going to determine what the operation is and then the execute will be on the operand so it's really b you want to make sure you get the operation correct because if you do get the operation correct then when you try to operate on the um on the let's call this thing when you try to actually ex execute the instruction you will end up with an error if you don't know what the opcode is hasn't it so the opcode is where the operation of the operand is what is inside the other parts there. All right, everybody understand that? Or you have questions? No questions. All right, so let's go number seven. Second part of our floating point representation, our number is called the what?
wants us. Nobody boy. So I have one guess which is a E, but it's new. Alright, the first part is the um you just have the the first part of the number is the sign. The next part of the number is the exponential. And the last part is the mantissa. So, the answer is D, right? Okay. So, when you are converted from, um, when you are converted from binary to decimal, you know how much your body power is to go back to. Okay, um, it now. Read only memory. All right, read only memory. Rom is Any guesses? No guesses? I see a B there, so let's see. Read only memory. Is it volatile? No. Volatile means if you take up the computer, if it will um, fill up. Is it programmable? No, it's not. Is it mounted on the motherboard? Yes, it is. Who's instruction for booting up the computer? Yes, it is. So the answer is B, three and four. Right, if it was programmable, programmable is really PROM, P-R-O-M. And volatile is on your RAM. RAM is the only thing that's volatile.
there's a kind of weird question just getting a comp sign multiple choice which does not prove your knowledge all right which are the following statements about logic gates are false so you have to read through each one and make sure you like pay attention to how to answer it let me hear your answers I see a C, so I check. Alright, a NOT gate can only have one input and one output, that is correct. NOT gate, one input, one output. NOT gate can have one or more inputs with only one output. This is definitely false, right? A NOT gate can have only one input and only one output. No, that's wrong, because I know. Um, a no gate can have two inputs. So this is wrong. A no gate can have one or more inputs, but only one output. Yes, a no gate. Um, sorry, more gate, not O in. I'll make it O ish. Right, good. Uh, but only one output, so that's correct. So this is correct, this is correct, these two wrong. So the answer two and three. So the answer is C. So we go to that next. All right, so this one is our figure. This is ten. Alright, so what does the truth table, what does this truth table correspond to? Let me make it a little bigger so you can see. Might be a little small. Right, yeah. Look at 9 again. Why am I to look at nine again for Melissa? Tell me. What about nine? No, I ticked, I ticked two and three because these are true. But the question asks which statements are false. So only the ones that the X are the ones that will be false. 
Tick in it means that it is true. This is false and that's false. So they want the two things that are false, which will be two and three. All right, so for number 10, um, right, this is, um, yeah, there's an AND gate because there's one AND one, which will get you one. So there's an AND gate, so that's D, that's correct. Um, Yeah, no problem, Melissa. That's cool. Alright, so number this one now. Which will be what? 11. 11 is the symbol that will represent an AND gate. Well, that's A clearly. I go 12 now. Alright, the range of instructions that a computer can execute is known as the what? Um, 12 is A, yeah, that's correct, the instruction set. So the list of instructions that a computer can execute is known as the instruction set. That would be like add, sub, mul, jump. All those things are part of the instruction set. That's um, basically machine um, language. Assembly language, sorry. Machine language is the ones and zeros. All right, let's see this one. This is 13. Okay, 13, the CPU deals with each instruction in a cycle. The sequence of instructions to carry out the machine instruction is called the machine cycle. The first action is to fetch the instruction, so they give us that from memory, and then the program counter is updated. The other three phases of the machine cycle are fetch, so it's fetch, decode, execute, and a store slash transfer right? that's basically what happened right so we had a fetch so we have fetch the code the code so clearly c and d is not the answer after you decode the instruction you have to execute the instruction and then transfer so it's going to be a all right so let's fetch the instruction decode what it is by getting the opcode after you get the opcode, you execute what based, what based on what the opcode says on the uh, upper end. And then uh, after the execution, you would store it in a, either a new register or store it in memory. And then go back through the same process, depending on how the program is good. Because you, you just have this thing here, um, opcode. Then you have upper end. Right, so fetch is going to fetch it. 
decode is going to check to see what that says to do. Executors do this, which will be like add one zero one zero one zero one zero one zero. Um, and that will do it. And then when it's done, it's going to transfer it to a register like AX or BX or some accumulator or some kind of thing like that. All right, next one will be 14. All right, I'll go up to 15 because that'll be the, um, that'll be the whole module. What I mean, yeah, module one questions. We'll do module two questions another time. All right, so 14. Not really that hard. list of computers and smallest to largest <laughs> oh this is kind of easy smallest is pda so that will be one first then after that will be a laptop microcomputer will be third and then fourth so one three four two one three four two so that's b don't, don't get mixed up between a microcomputer and a laptop microcomputer is another name for desktop We'll lose that and a laptop will of course be smaller so the answer is b and the last but not least before i leave mexico will probably do some more PDA is like a um, like a phone. Portable display, no, pocket something. I can't remember what P it's portable something.
All right, which of the following rules on the table best match each word to the given statement? Okay, so retains data when power supply is switched off. That is clearly going to be EEPROM. So we're looking at this and that for sure. An electronic pathway along which signals can be sent from one computer to another, that's called a bus. So we have that there, so we're still on B and C. Used to hold the address of instructions and data in memory is our register. So this is going to be 3, so our answer is C. So this is our EEPROM. This is the bus. This is the register. And frequency is clock speed. That's about clock wrong. Clock. C L O C K. Nice. Scene. All right, y'all. It is um. It's ten o'clock. It's my bedtime. So, well, bedtime, kind of bedtime, bedtime. All right, so next week, most likely, I'll, um, I'll do out on next 15. This would have been most of the stuff for module one. All right, so um, next week, we'll do some more. And, or sometime during the week. Or let us um, keep following on Instagram, and you'll see when I'm doing um, Kamsai again, because I might have to do some IT work. Call have unit one IT, unit one comes out, and then unit two IT and unit two comes out, and all of these all of these students kinda like beating them up. But when we get closer to exams, trust me, we'll we'll do real plenty. We'll do real plenty and we'll do out all. But for now we'll just kinda study your book. <laughs> have a good night. Enjoy your week. And if you have questions, you could always ask on Instagram. Yeah, we're gonna do the unit one IT. I'll I'll make time for that. I guess I need to figure out the, the schedule a little bit. Bye-bye.